Boston's best DJ. All right, so uh, this is Jason Rubio, and I'm interviewing the one and only DJ Laz. Uh, first of all, I just want to say it's such an honor to be able to interview you. Um, I started DJing as a kid in 1991, and man, I spent that very first album, the DJ Laz album, and I wore out many needles, wow. man, many needles, just trying to be just like you, man. <laughs> so, well, first uh, of all, I appreciate that, and thank you for the compliment. Yeah, man. Uh, so, just want to find out a little bit about you. Um, how did you become DJ Laz? Tell us about your journey. See, very similar to uh, to the way most guys get started out doing mobile parties. My brother was a DJ, and I would go and you know help him out, and I'd see him play music, meet girls, and get paid at the end of the night. And I said, <laughs> "This is for me, right here." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome. And uh, that was pretty. That was pretty much the beginning. Um, I had a lot of leg surgeries when I was young, so I didn't do what normal kids do, go outside and play and all that, so I would just sit home uh-huh. and practice, and I remember going to uh, certain events with my brother, and I got, I got to witness how he would make people happy with music, Yeah, and I was like, wow, I, I absolutely love this, And but I, I always wanted to take it a step further. My brother was very happy, you know, just doing the parties or doing a club, and he did it for many years. Uh-huh. And I'd say, oh, man, I said, I want to get on the radio. I want to make records. I want to do all sorts of stuff. Right. And th- that was the beginning. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty awesome. Um, and, you know, you made a lot of club hits, man. I mean, when we think of the, the Miami sound, I mean, it's, it's not possible at all to not bring up DJ Laz in that conversation when we talk about Miami music. Um, you know, what, what influences did you have creating your unique style of music? Um, Basically, you know, I, I grew up, you know, playing all the Miami booty records, and I just wanted to do something that nobody had done before, so I was at home messing around one day, and I was playing El Africano from Wilfredo Vargas, uh-huh. and I started mixing I started mixing it over uh, Clay D, Boot to Booty, uh-huh. and it sounded really good, Yeah, and I couldn't wait to do the mix that night on the radio to see what people would say, and I did it, and people were like, yo, what was that? That was cool, blah, 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 and yeah. then I did it the next night at a club, and people were like, yo, that was awesome. Nobody had done that before. Nobody had ever mixed merengue with, you know, English stuff, and and then I said, man, there's something here. So yeah. I teamed up with a, a couple of guys here at a West Palm Beach, Danny D and DJ Wiz. Uh-huh. And we made the record, we made the record Mami and Negro, which was a sample from Wilfredo Vaca. Yeah. Over Miami Booty Stick and stuff, and it took off. Yeah, yeah, I remember it, man. It was a great track. It was a great album. Awesome. You know what it was? It was, so, it was so different from everything else that was out there that it stood out. And that's what, these days, that's what it takes. That's why, you know, a record that comes on that sounds different than everything else, people turn the radio up instead of down. They're like, what's that? Yeah, definitely. That's, that's definitely true. Uh, so, you know, you made so many great club hits uh, uh, and a Billboard hits as well, and uh, many of which we still personally play today at our events. Um, what was your favorite song or track or even album, if you will, uh, to, re- cre- to create oh, or record? <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, the, the different genres, but as far as booty records, uh-huh. uh, I, would, I would have to say Esa Morena was the, my, my favorite. Oh, man, yeah, it's a great song, definitely. Okay. And I mean, and, and it's, it's funny because I, I, I sent a line uh, to Pitbull, and I go, man, I didn't make a, a hit, I made a classic. Yes. And he actually had one of his records. Yeah. And that's, that's, to me, that's the best. When I see kids that weren't even born yet, and that record comes on and they, and they lose their minds, I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty awesome, man. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, pretty cool. Sure. Uh, you've, you've had a lot of other great hits, too, you know. Um, it's hard to narrow it down to just one. So, you know what? Uh, Red Alert yeah. was a lot of fun. It was, there were no words to Red Alert. Yeah. Uh, I got home from the club one night and we were supposed to master the album the next day and I had a sample from Carlos Santana on one of my records and it got denied. They wouldn't allow us to use a sample so the label told me, hey, uh, we're mastering the album tomorrow. You need to have something ready yeah, to wow. master. So I got home at 3 o'clock in the morning, turned the drum machine on and made Red Alert. Wow. And we mastered that the next day. Wow. And it was one of those things that it just fell together. It was sitting in front of the machine, and 20 minutes later, I had a shell of a song that sounded pretty good. Yeah. And then it took off all by itself. 
Oh yeah, I remember that, man. That was a huge club hit. Uh, man, as soon as we'd start the record, yep. not even five seconds, everybody ran out to the dance floor, man. Yeah, and no word, that was the best. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty Red awesome. Alert. That's it. Red <laughs> alert. Yeah. Uh, so you know, moving on, I, I know you're uh, doing the DJ Laz Morning Show now, and you're also on uh, Pitbull's Globalization Sirius XM channel. Yeah. And uh, I read yeah. about a few of your famous interviews, uh, including President Obama. And um, I think that yeah. uh, I saw that you obtained Justin Bieber's 911 call. I think he reported paparazzi. So what was that like? Um, it's great having low friends in high places. <laughs> uh, but I ended up with that before TMZ. Wow. And they were trying to figure out how we got it as well. <laughs> um Listen, but you know, whenever, and as a matter of fact, that was when I was doing radio in LA and Miami uh -huh. at the same time. Uh -huh. And that Justin Bieber thing was crazy. Yeah. Um, just being able to get a story like that and get it before everybody else. And I, as a matter of fact, I got it. I, I broke it in Miami first. Yeah. And then at 9 o'clock in the morning here, which was 6 a.m. LA time, mm -hmm. everybody in LA was like, what? What's this? What's going on? And then TMZ called us. Yeah. That's when I knew we touched the nerve. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty awesome, man. Um, and then you and interviewed... As far as, as, far as, as, far as former President Obama, uh -huh. I got a call one day, and they tell me um, the president would like to come on your show. And I thought it was a joke. I thought it was one of my friends messing around. Uh -huh. And I'm like, uh, I was a little hesitant. And then they said... Uh, we're going to call you, we're going to give you a number, you call us right back, and we'll schedule the event. When I called that number back, they answered the White House, and I was like, <laughs> whoa. Wow. So we scheduled the we scheduled the interview, and I remember the day that we were doing it, it was a Sunday. It was September the 9th, because I ended up playing the interview on September 11th, uh -huh. and got all sorts of press because of that. Yeah. But, um, but September the 9th, when the phone rang... A guy was on the line, and he goes, the next voice you'll hear is the President of the United States. I kind of got goosebumps. I kind of groupied out a little bit. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Um, so, you know, moving on. So, Mobile Beat uh, is who I write for, and it's a DJ magazine. And, um, you know, you've, you've done what every DJ aspires to do. Uh, you made amazing hit records. Um, now you have your own radio show. Uh, you work with amazing artists uh, throughout your career. What, what advice would you give DJs out there that, that hope to be, you know, one day be the next DJ Laz? Stay real. Don't, don't ever be a yes person. Uh, don't ever tell anybody something that you truly don't mean. If the record's not good, tell them it's not good. Mm -hmm. And I think people will respect you more for that. Because I'd hate to tell somebody I can help you out and do something for you when I know I can't. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I remember, you know, Pitbull, perfect example. Um, you know, I'm, I'm basically Uncle Laz. Yeah. <laughs> and he would bring me songs and songs and songs and songs, and none of them were right. And then all of a sudden, one day, he brings me this record called Oye. Yeah. And I told him, I called him back, and I go, yo, now we got one. And he said, you think so? And I go, I don't think so. I know so. Yeah. And that afternoon, I played it on the radio, and that there's no looking back, you know, global superstar now. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, to this day, I've always been honest with him. Whether something's great, something's not great, and I think people respect you more when it comes from a place of truth right. and authenticity. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Uh, and so, then, hey, and at the end of the day, work hard. If you're, not, if you're not afraid of working hard, you'll get places. If you don't like to work hard, this is not the business for you. Yeah, that's, that's definitely true. Definitely true. Um, so what, where can people find you now? They can listen to you uh, there in Miami and then um, also on the Pitbull channel, right? And um, what else is going on with DJ Laz today? Well, uh, in the process of uh, renewing a new contract uh, with, with radio, uh, my next plan is to go syndicated, so I want to be in multiple markets. Awesome. So uh, every time I put my mind to something, I've accomplished it, so I'm, I'm, I expect to do the same with this. Um, so as far as in Miami right now, hits 97.3. Uh -huh. And as far as Sirius XM, Globalization, uh, Pitbull's channel, which now is on channel 13. Okay. And that, to me, that is my, that is my therapy. That is just fun. When I get to play music that there's no rules, there's no, you know, program director telling you, you got to play this, you got to play that. It's mm -hmm. just whatever you, you're vibing to, whatever you're in the mood for, and, and people react to it. That's, to me, that's just therapy. 
Yeah, that, that's awesome. Yeah, we, we listen to your show all the time. Uh, you know, you, you play freestyle stuff, you play a lot of old school hits, we play it all. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's, it's educating people too. You know, a lot of the, the, the new people don't know about the old school music and that's the stuff that gets the most reaction. Yeah, yeah, by far, by far. It, it's, a, it's insane. But I, de- I definitely look forward to doing that show every week. It's just fun to me. Awesome, man. Uh, well, we, we look forward to syndication. Uh, we would love to have DJ Laz right here in Austin, man. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, let us know what's going on. We'll be happy to tune in and let our people know. Uh, I, I would love that. And Texas has always been uh, very special to me. Texas, the entire state of Texas was uh, uh, a very big supporter of all my music. So I just want to say thank you to everybody uh, in Texas. You know, not to name one place in particular, because all of Texas was was amazing so thank you guys and get ready some some new and uh, bigger and better dj Laz stuff on the way awesome thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us dj Laz. you have a good one uh, you too thank you guys have a great day all right Stay you too. Safe from that storm, okay? all right thank you you got it guys bye-bye Bye.